Good afternoon. And thank you very much for, for coming today. And I appreciate really your taking time from your busy schedule, especially at this time of the year. Before we start, uh, I would like to, excuse me. Before we start, I'd like to acknowledge some of the uh, newest members of our university community and our senior leadership. VP of Finance and Administration, Laura Hubbard, she's here. Welcome. <laughs> VP for Development and Alumni Relations, Nancy Wells. She's out of town. She's doing her job. Uh, School of Nursing Dean, Marshall Lewis. Is she here? Yeah. Please welcome. And of course, uh, during the midsummer, uh, our new provost, Charles Dukowski, would be joining us. I would also like to welcome uh, the volunteers joining us today from the UB Council and the Alumni Association, as well as UB Foundation. Welcome. Next week would be my uh, one year anniversary of the appointment as UB's 15th president. Reflecting on this milestone is an opportunity to look back on how far we have come together over the past year, as well as an opportunity to look ahead to the future. It has been an amazing year. Over the last 12 months, we have experienced many dramatic achievements and milestones at UB. We had a legislation, NY SUNY 2020, which gives us the stability for five years. We are moving forward to hire faculty and staff. We had the best undergraduate class in four years, and every year we are really improving the class of the undergraduate students that are coming in. We have multiple building projects on all three campuses, and we had surge in philanthropy. As you all know, we had uh, uh, UB's single largest cash gift from one of our alumni is $40 million. These things don't happen by chance. They are product of a long range vision, UB 2020, and the outcome of all of the hard work together that we have done during the last several years. Everyone plays a part. I want to share some of my thoughts on various topics, and then I look forward to your questions, but more importantly, your comments. And I hope this would be an ongoing dialogue. This is not the beginning and the end of the dialogue. Hopefully, we'll continue this in the future. Let's figure out where we are in higher education around the country and here at UB, just to set a context here. There's really a paradox in the 21st century public higher education. There's increasingly public increasing public demand and decreasing public support. In a challenging economy, universities across the US struggle to compete in the environment of diminishing resources. At the same time, the demand for public access, affordability, public accountability in higher education continues to rise. These challenges also represent great opportunities in the context of these local, national, and global issues, the critical importance of the universities like UB is clearer than ever. On an individual level, while the economic crisis have affected every sector, the college degree clearly remains a critical advantage. High school graduates without college degree have twice, more than twice, unemployment rate of high school graduates with college degree. Also, over the past 30 years, the earning gap between the average college graduate and the average high school graduate has more than doubled as well to over 75%. Regionally, statewide, and nationally, colleges and universities are increasingly called to play a leadership role 
in driving economic and social revitalizations in their communities. As important as all these roles are for UB, our impact and importance goes far beyond this. We are uniquely positioned to anticipate, understand, and respond to a wide range of social problems, from neighborhood concern to global, large-scale challenges in healthcare, human rights, and public policy. We are leaders in building sustainable communities on our campuses, in our neighborhoods, and on a global basis. And most importantly, we are educating the next generation of leaders to build a stronger future. Just last week, we had undergraduate students and graduate students presenting their posters, research, that they did with the faculty mentors. And if you see the kind of work they have done and the kind of excitement they have about their work, you see a bright future. No university can or should be all things to all people. Realizing our full potential requires us to think clearly about who we are as an institution, where do we want to go, and how we will get there. We are a very good institution with a rich array of strengths. Now we must become better, even better. Not only to achieve greater stature, but to achieve an even greater impact. This is the long range commitment we have made together as part of UB 2020 process. From my own vantage point as president and reflecting back on our work together with, over the past several years through our strategic envisioning process, these are our priorities as I see them. Building on foundation of research excellence, providing a world-class education for our students, raising the stature of our university within a national and international context, and perhaps most importantly, sharing the benefit of our academic excellence with the broader communities, locally as well as globally, for a greater public good. At its heart, our vision is about academic excellence. It begins with our faculty who drive the research enterprise, contribute to the discoveries and ideas that change the world around us for the better, and educate the students who represent the future of these pursuits. And so achieving this vision means investing in faculty excellence, in student excellence, and in the campus environment that enables them to thrive. You may have heard me talk about these objectives in terms of what I call the three E's, excellence, engagement, and efficiency are guiding principles for UB 2020. The first E, excellence, means excellence in everything we do. Excellence in our teaching, excellence in our research, excellence in the services the, that we provide, the infrastructure that we have, everything we do, we need to be excellent. Engagement, engagement with our internal community, engagement with our alumni, engagement with our supporters, our elected officials in Albany as well as in Washington DC. But something very unique in Buffalo being the third or fourth poorest city in the nation, we have economic engagement. You know, it's a, some, some, somebody wrote a question that uh, why are we so concerned about economic engagement? We, we don't live in an island and we can forget about where we are. If we are not economically better, we cannot attract the faculty, the students, because there are not opportunities for them. So it's in our own interest to be engaged in this process. Of course, as a university, we don't create jobs. We create environment for jobs. We, create the, we, we educate the brightest students, 
the faculty create the intellectual property, and we create the arts and cultural environment for people to come and live here. And creating job is outside the direct domain of what UB does, but we are really the critical catalyst in creating those jobs. You know, I, I, I used to be at University of Maryland, and one of the uh, jokes I tell people is that uh, uh, if you are in College Park, Maryland, and the only time people care that you're not doing your job is really when uh, the, the Duke and Maryland basketball game, after the game, there's no riots. Uh, in, in here, actually, the situation, because there are really, there's a federal government, there are multiple research universities around there. Here, we have really the only research university in Western New York is, is, is UB, and we have a lot more expectation from the community, but we also have to respond to that because it's in our own interest to think about that. So the engagement is really something different for UB than it would be for somewhere else. And of course, efficiency. That's the 30. We are a public institution. We need to be efficient in whatever we do. In fact, all the transformations that began in 2004 and 5, if we had not really looked at the way to the, the th we do things at, at UB, with the $84 million cuts, we would be in worse situation than we are today. So that has paid off in terms of our, our excellence and, and, and engagement and efficiency. To grow in excellence and impact, here are some of the made immediate objectives that I see. Number one, enrich the educational experience for our students, growing the student body in quality, not in quantity, through student scholarship, unique research opportunities, and study abroad experiences, and state-of-the-art classrooms and facilities. Number two, right-size our faculty by hiring 250 to 300 more faculty across the disciplines, hiring staff, corresponding number of staff to support and provide the services to our students. This will give us faculty size that's comparable with our peers. Student faculty ratio will be similar, but more importantly, it's not just the student faculty ratio. This will provide faculty more time to do cutting edge research and scholarship, more sections for the students to graduate in time, as well as more economic impact. So really, hiring faculty is not just to think about the, uh, the student-faculty ratio, but what it does. And as you uh, already have seen that we are talking about graduate, uh, graduate in four, finish in four, and, and we can't do that without more faculty, without more staff support. And this is part of the, 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 uh, uh, our, our vision as we see. Number three, create the robust physical environment for our faculty and student to pursue excellence. This is really something that we've been working on with the UB 2020 Master Capital Plan. And our goal is to really now implement that next step, next step, and so on. Number four, engage the community partners and supporters to advance and advocate for our, our vision of excellence. We're not just planning, we are doing. We have been making a great deal of collective progress, now we need to sustain and build on this momentum. This is a time of tremendous opportunity, and here are some of the key issues we are focusing on. As I said before, we have a historic new model for funding public higher education, a rational tuition plan, which is predictable, which actually is lower per year increase than we have seen the last 25 years. Attached to that, 25% of the increase is going to make sure that we have affordable college, student scholarship coming in there. And this is really first time in, in, in New York history that we can plan for five years. And we're doing that, faculty is involved, the deans are working with the provost, and Part of the things that we have announced, including finishing four, is really part of this, uh, this process. We also had a challenge grant. If you look at our UB 2020 plan, we talked about uh, the master plan. The challenge grant is about $35 million from, from, from the state. But what we plan to do is to move the medical school downtown 
and invest in the faculty strength. I should point out one of the questions people have asked about is, you know, moving medical school downtown, are we taking the tuition money and putting that in the, in the medical school? Is the money going to go to build the buildings? Absolutely not. If you had a few minutes when you came in, outside there are actually some displays, and one of the displays talks about how the medical school would be built, where the money would come from. It, it would basically be through uh, UB capital funds, through a uh, bond that would be issued, through also philanthropic gift, and through some of the money that was supposed to be used to, uh, to renovate some of the old buildings where the medical school is right now, shifting that money to the new building. Why do we need to, to move the medical school downtown? That's the other question that people ask. Well, think about the medical education and think about the medical research, the paradigm shift that has happened, the, the clinical and translational type of research that happens now. We would be in proximity of the Buffalo General Hospital, the HWI, the Roswell Park Cancer Institute. We have our own facilities, New York Center of Excellence in Bioinformatic and Life Sciences, and we have the new building, the critical, uh, the uh, clinical and translational research center building that, that's just opening in a few months. But education of medical students now is so much tied to their interaction with the physicians and the hospitals right from the first year that this close proximity provides them a better education. That's my first E, excellent education. But also the bed to bench and bench to bed research that's so important now for medical schools is really the proximity, proximity is, is so important to do that as well. So, so I, I, I should say that uh, uh, although much attention is understandably focused on the medical school move right now, and it is very timely one, it's important to remember that this is just one aspect of overall UB enterprise. One of the greatest strengths in its comprehensive scope of academic programs is our capacity for interdisciplinary collaborations across many strong areas in the arts and humanities, social sciences, natural and applied sciences, as well as the professionals. So we have a very strong research and interdisciplinary collaboration and that will continue. Now how would we manage the budget? I told you that we've got a five-year sort of horizon here where there is a certain amount of tuition money coming in. I also told you that that money is going to go in, in, in the education, hiring faculty, support, staff, as well as creating environment for students to learn and faculty to do research. This is the first time that we can talk about five-year budget. In fact, uh, this is the first time in four years that we have received no additional budget cut. Not this first time I'm not talking to you. I was talking to you as a provost all the time, how much cuts is going to be there. This is the first time we're not talking about that. The, the provost office, interim provost, uh, are, are talking to the deans. They're making three years plans in terms of how they would uh, uh, use the budget. Most of the, more than 50% of this additional money are going to go to the decanal units for them to plan how that's going to be used. Some of the money will go to the, uh, to the support units, and some of the money would be used centrally to think about the, the great ideas, think about the, uh, the incentives that we'll provide for educational improve, for, for the institutional improvement, for the academic excellence that actually comes from multiple uni units working together. In fact, uh, we had a, uh, the interim provost, uh, Harvey Stinger, called that three E funds for excellence, engagement, and efficiency. And we invited proposals. There were more than 100 proposals submitted from various parts of the campus. There was a, a team of nine evaluators, faculty, staff, and retired or ex-administrators. They're all working together. And, and just to give you a, 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 a sample of things that they funded, they funded the Arts and Emerging Technologies Program. 
They funded Center of Excellence in Writing. They funded energy diversification projects in Western New York. These are all projects that came from you, fra came from the faculty and deans and, and so on. On the academic support side, here are, here are a few examples. The first one is e-textbooks pilot pro programs in university libraries. As we all know, the textbook costs are really pretty high right now. And we are doing experiments to see how we can really uh, improve the uh, accessibility of the textbook without paying $300 for, for a given course. Uh, the second project that this funded was diversity recruitment and of course finish in four. So this gives you a little bit of glimpse of how the, 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 the fund that are coming in are, are gonna be used. In fact, uh, uh, Provost is, Interim Provost uh, McComb is gonna have a budget presentation session for the department chairs coming up very soon in May so that you can see how we are planning and what we plan to do. But state operating funds only take us so far. Fundraising is critical. We have university wise efforts and many deans have their own campaign beginning for the fundraising. I know, for example, law, medicine, engineering, arts and science, and many others actually have begun their own fundraising efforts. And I talked to you during my uh, inauguration about 2022, 20 cities in 20 months to re-engage the alumni. It has been really, a, I've done seven now, by, by seven, um, I've done seven of the 20 by today and there's one next week coming up in Washington DC. It has been tremendous. Some places we have 200 alumni show up, some places 80, some places 60, and they're all very, very interested in what's going on at UD. In fact, they all are connected. I was in Los Angeles one and once and uh, one of the alumni knew precisely what was going on at UB in, in Buffalo that morning. They really follow us, but they also are very proud of the UB diploma and also they're thankful of the staff that gave them the advice and the faculty that, they ta that taught them and they remember their names and they're really very, very thankful. In fact, I'm surprised they are more thankful now than they probably were when they were going to the, to the school here. It's, it's really amazing. And, 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 and many of them are very successful. But fundraising is not really something that you go and ask people money. You need to develop relationships. You need to show them why they should invest in, into the institution. And we are actually doing a pretty good job. And uh, as I said, my next uh, stop is in, in Washington, D.C. About, about two weeks ago, we went to China the first overseas trip, we went to Beijing, Shanghai, and Hong Kong. In Beijing, we had 165 people that showed up, alumni. Some of them are very important alumni. You know, the, the, the founder of Baidu.com is a UB alumni, the, which is the largest uh, search engine in China, sort of parallel to Google. The, uh, the ex uh, higher education minister, who is also now the Chinese Academy of Engineering president, is a UB grad. But there are a lot of other grads actually that are doing so well. And, and they are excited and they want to really figure out how to help. So really UB has its wings all across the world. And we have done a great job in the last 50 years or so in terms of the international in students, international programs. But you know, in globalization of a, of a campus is not just having the students, we are also working on making sure that our students when they graduate are prepared for this global world. They know about the world. And so, so th that's really also true sign of an internationalized university. Academic excellence is the goal of all these development activities. As I told you before, my personal goal is really to raise money for faculty endowed chairs and student scholarship. You know, if you look 25 years from now and you look back 25 years, the only two real things that define a great university are the quality of faculty and the quality of graduates. And as long as we take care of those, we can build buildings, we can do other things as we go along. But those two are very, very critical. I also want to say that uh, we continue to seek out other opportunities for strategic investment. For example, uh, uh, we sold WBFO and we received $4 million. That $4 million is gonna go 
into creating up to four endowed chairs and one million into undergraduate scholarship for students in arts and humanities. That's what we plan to do. And uh, that's really very good because that provides the, uh, the resources for the areas where resources usually don't come from outside. All of our development efforts are focused on the goal, as I said, on academic excellence and starting with the contributions of our faculty. Distinguished faculty continue to attract national recognition and impact a wide range of social areas through their scholarship, teaching, and service. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you just a small sample of what's going on and I apologize if I don't mention somebody's recent award. Uh, the UB leadership is addressing, faculty leadership is addressing pre-K through 12 science education. We have the NSF grant for integrated science education program with, Bu with Buffalo Public School. Elevating the national conversation about bullying, abuse, and school violence with our Alberti Center in the Graduate School of Education. UB continues to be world-renowned as the home of many world-winning pioneers in arts and literature field, for example, the Bollingen Prize in Poetry. Architecture faculty are designing innovative home concepts to accommodate the needs of the aging baby boomer population. We just got the National Society of Home Builders Award. Engineering faculty are changing the industrial conversation about structural steel, American Institute of Steel Construction Publication Award. And in general, if we look at our junior faculty that we have hired, they're doing excellent in, in getting all these awards. In fact, UB is one of the leaders in NSF Career Awards for our junior faculty, and they continue to perform well. And also, with the faculty's research and their reputation, recently the state legislation approved a new center of excellence in material informatics. That's again a testament of the faculty research and their reputation. This will foster not only the research that we do, but our strong relationship with the industry. Students are not far behind. They're doing really well, and I'm gonna just give you a very few examples here. Uh, uh, Esther uh, Buckwalter, environmental engineering major, uh, was awarded 2012 UDAL scholarship, a very prestigious, very competitive national scholarship. Dan Salem, a junior chemical engineering major, recently owned a prestigious 2012 Goldwater Scholarship. And Matthew Zambito, winner of a federally funded critical language scholarship to study Turkish. These are the kind of students that we, are, we have in our midst and in few years they would be the leaders around the world. We also have been investing in infrastructure for the last many years. UV landscape is changing. It's changing on all three campuses. Here are, here's a list of some of the uh, upcoming projects and I really encourage you to, to, to spend a few minutes after, after this conversation to look at uh, the renderings of these projects uh, in the atrium. We opened the Griner Hall in August 2011 and I'm told that many of the parents want to come and study again. It's such a good hall. Uh, the uh, UB Solar Strand will be opening soon this month. Davis Hall, the new engineering building is opening this, this spring. The uh, Clinical and Translational Research Center in downtown is gonna open uh, this year, later uh, uh, in, in the summer and so on. Red Jacket Dining Hall is reopening. The new pharmacy building, Kapoor Hall, will open coming fall as well. The uh, Educational Opportunity Center in downtown next to the Gateway Building will be opening in 2013 and the heart of the campus renovations continue and they started about five years ago. These developments at UB are remarkable in national context. Except, exceptional amount of major building in the 12 month span increase UB's reputation for innovation in student living and learning 
and it further establishes UB as a leader in campus sustainability. Five lead design projects in two years, from Geiner Hall to EOC. Also, we are very active in the regional economic development. UB plays, as I said before, a very important role in the economic development. And UB faculty and staff were very critical in putting together and helping to put together the, uh, the strategic plan for the uh, Western New York region, which was uh, awarded as the best, a best uh, plan awardee, which was a, a best plan awardee, and also which led to the billion dollar challenge from the governor for, for Buffalo, and I'm sure that the faculty and staff and UB would be really involved in, in planning for that and helping to, to create the environment for economic prosperity. All of this uh, uh, things I have mentioned before is a testament to the collective work and commitment of the entire campus community. This is a pivotal time for UB. Uh, as UB grows in quality and stature, so will our impact. But to take full advantage of these opportunities, we need to be truly transformative in our thinking at every level. This is a challenge for all of us collectively as a university community. Looking forward, as I've said at the start of my remark today, these are our priorities as I see them. Building further on the foundation of research excellence, providing a transformative world-class education for our students, elevating the stature of our university nationally and internationally, and finally sharing the benefit of our academic excellence for the greater public good locally and globally. As an institution, UB will continue to invest in excellence for our faculty, staff, and students across the disciplines. In turn, every individual has an equally important part to play in this commitment. Every role at UB, whether highly visible or behind the scenes, contributes to advancing UB's vision of excellence. Whether you advise, mentor, or guide students in their pursuit of academic excellence, whether you are a member of the facilities team contributing to the improvement of our campus built environment, whether you are a faculty member developing the next life-saving therapeutic drugs or defining a new literary field, whether you help shape the local K through 12 educational policy or global human rights debates, we all contribute actively to shape UV's future. I appreciate your joining me today and hope you will continue to be actively engaged in this conversation about where we are going and how we will get there. And now I welcome your ideas and questions. Thank you.